Rat Cat. I remember there was one song that was particularly uh, strange to me. It was very catchy, and so I really liked it when I was a camper there. But now, looking back, it's extremely frightening. And so the song goes like this. Show me the way to reduce, for I am fat and I want to grow thin. Had a little bite about an hour ago, and it went to my triple chin. No matter what I eat, be it chicken, duck, or goose, you will always hear me singing the song. Show me the way to read. I don't want to read, but I got to reduce. Got to watch those calories. Bruh. What's up, Dwight? What you got in the bag? Big Mac fries. I'll play you for it. My lunch? First one to miss. Watch as the other one eat. Pause. I spy with my little eye, irony. Our world is one of constant contradictions. Basketball players exercise vigorously as the Big Mac and fries look on. Shows like The Biggest Loser are interrupted by advertisements for McDonald's and Burger King. We are inundated with messages telling us it wants to consume, 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 and diet, diet, diet. The media is probably an important component in the epidemic of childhood obesity. Um, partly what kids see on TV and partly, uh, of course, the food advertising. One of the first things we did in music class was learn this like fast food restaurant song. It was like, Pizza Hut and McDonald's. Children are targeted from a really young age. It can be blurry, the lines between programming and advertisements for kids. Well, childhood obesity uh, is part of a complex of risk factors that are increasing um, along with it, including high blood pressure, um, diabetes or pre-diabetes, and changes in your cholesterol levels as well. There's an effort now to have regulations so, uh, on that type of, of advertising of targeting to little children. Studies have shown that when kids are exposed to advertising, they consume more calories, eat higher fat diets, and drink more soda and eat fewer fruits and vegetables. Ads for foods high in fat, salt, and sugar, and low in nutritional value encourage kids to make unhealthy choices. More than 80% of ads during children's TV programs are for fast foods or snacks. That's 10 ads per hour. What's more is that 40% of kids' caloric intake comes from solid fat and added sugars and sodas or fruit drinks provide nearly 10% of calories per day. Researchers studied food commercials that appeared during 84 hours of primetime programming and 12 hours of Saturday morning cartoons during one month of 2004. They calculated the nutritional content of a purely television advertised diet and found that it contained 20 times the amount of fat and 25 times the amount of sugar recommended for a day. What's really ironic is that food makers spend $11.3 billion on advertising a year, while the USDA spent only $268 million on nutritional education. Often when you go into these fast food restaurants, you see these images of idols that children have, like movie stars or professional athletes that the fast food companies use to promote their products. So it's like this blurry line between like what is fun in television and like what is healthy and you know it's like Shrek on TV saying, oh it's really healthy to eat at McDonald's or it's really healthy to eat Nutella. You get one of four different Lego building sets when you buy a McDonald's Happy Meal. Each set builds one of these four toys. The way that the media ropes children in from such a young age and makes them buyers for life basically is really disheartening to me and really scary. That's why the International Obesity Task Force issued the Sydney Principles, which state that actions to reduce marketing to children should support the rights of children, afford them substantial protection, be statutory in nature, take a wide definition of commercial promotions, guarantee commercial free childhood settings, include cross-border media, and be evaluated, monitored, and enforced. We are supposed to eat all this food, all this fast food, and we're also supposed to be extremely skinny. And we live in a world that calls for instant gratification. You know, here's all this food, eat it quickly, it's easy to get, 
and then also, um, then you're fat, and what do you do? Well, you eat some diet pills, it's easy, it's quick, and you're skinny. Anybody can lose weight in 20 days. There is something that they're selling on the internet, and probably in grocery stores and drugstores, called Sensa. And it's something that you sprinkle on your food, and weight falls off. It just falls off. And they say, yeah, I put this on, and I've lost weight. We've got so much. We've got such great opportunity. We've got so much freedom, and we're shooting ourselves in the foot with our lifestyle. We get the commercials on TV, and that, you know, oh, I've got heartburn. Oh, well, here, take this pill and then eat your pizza. No. If you have heartburn, your body is saying, hey, I don't want that stuff. But you're masking it with this Band-Aid of this pill. Look at the Denny's commercials and the Burger Kings. And, and now, today is uh, St. Patrick's Day. And you can go to Denny's, I believe, or IHOP, I think it's Denny's, and get um, a waffle cone full of mashed potatoes. And they're shoving it in your face. And I'm wondering, who would eat this? You know, Burger King or McDonald's has burger, bacon, sausage, blah, blah, blah. And they always have a pretty girl with her big mouth, very sexual, you know, ah, and there she is eating this big burger. They know exactly how to get to you. They know how to get to you. Women and men come in all different shapes and sizes. And I think American men and boys are really, really losing a lot in their life because they're looking for the perfect woman that they see in magazines, on TV, that, oh, look at her, she's beautiful, look at these models. The media's influence on weight loss is pretty complicated because on one hand, they are constantly telling us that we're too fat and we're too fat and so we need to get skinnier. And then on the other hand, they're showing us all of these advertisements for a lifestyle that does not at all fit in with the image that they're showing us. It's a system that's based more on uh, maximizing profit for big companies because you eat lots of food and then you spend lots of money on diet programs so everyone ends up making a lot more money. These two disastrous diets are at acute ends of the eating spectrum and their bodies scream the result. Pause again. There's a problem here. When 34% of adults are obese and half a million teenagers have eating disorders, there is something fundamentally wrong with our society. This is the paradox between consumption and reduction in advertising. But how are obese people being treated in the media? In TV shows such as The Biggest Loser, Heavy, One Big Happy Family, and many, many more, obese people are shown to be disgusting, lazy slobs. The media is clearly a place where these stereotypes flourish. Fatness is made into this kind of spectacle. Um, oftentimes, fat people are seen in our society as more as objects than as people. If you think about a show like The Biggest Loser, for example, where um, a number of obese people are competing with each other um, to try to gain this really desired status as a less obese or less um, fat person. Like, the stigma exists both in the media and in regular life that I think really distances people from the, ex like, especially skinny people like me, um, from the experience of people who are obese, who are adipose. Fifteen years later and this is what you see. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, okay? You know your lasagna that you said I was trying to steal your recipe? Mm-hmm. Well, you wasn't looking, I added my secret ingredient to it. To my lasagna? <laughs> to your lasagna. Every Monday by Bravo, Jackie Warner's got eight new clients who have everything, including some excess baggage. Like the news media portrays obesity specifically as a disease or something that needs to be treated in our youth and in our schools and in our society as a whole. I think oftentimes in our society we associate health with moral goodness, like if I am healthy, then obviously I have sort of this moral superiority because I'm able to control my desires for food, be able to control myself to really get out and exercise. When in reality, there's a lot of things going on that have to do with you know a person's situation, a person like the way that a person has been raised, or even the way that a person's genetics works, which might not be necessarily associated with them making quote bad decisions. We have to take the situation back into our own hands and take control of our food and our media. It's gotten out of control.